Hey class, we're going to continue the lesson on the speech writing process. I just wanted to make sure that as you're thinking about your speech topic, now that you're ready to move on to organizing the body of the speech, I wanted to make sure to cover the different organizational patterns that you can use because this is going to be the next step in the decision making process. So remember in the last lesson, we talked about the importance of picking your topic and narrowing it down because you don't want it to be too broad because then your speech is not going to be focused enough. After you pick your topic and narrow it down, we talked about the importance of understanding the general purpose of the speech. It's either to inform or to persuade, and that's going to help impact the tone of the writing of the speech. Then after that, we talked about the specific purpose statement and the importance of developing a very focused, specific purpose statement so that you understand exactly what it is that you want your audience to get out of the speech itself. And then finally, we talked about the central idea. Remember, when you write your central idea, it's going to be a one sentence summary of what your speech is about. And eventually, when we get to the point where we are working on the introduction of the speech, you're going to just take that central idea that you've already written and plug it directly into the introduction. That's how you actually reveal the topic to the audience. So let's talk about organizing the main points of your presentation in the body of the speech. There are basically five organizational patterns that you can use in order to organize the main points of the speech. The first one uh, is called the topical organizational pattern. Hi everybody, meet Oliver. This is Oliver, my Rottweiler puppy. <laughs> anyway, so the topical organizational pattern, that is when you are going to subdivide the topic into subtopics or into different types. You know, for example, if I wanted to do an informative speech on the different kinds of fireworks that are that exist. So I might decide I want to go ahead and focus on um, four different types of fireworks, skyrockets, roman candles, pinwheels, and lances. So that would be organized in the topical organizational pattern. Then after that, you could choose the chronological organizational pattern. This is going to be more suitable if you wanted to either teach about a process or if you wanted to show how a line of events occurred over time. Um, for example, if I wanted to do a presentation on how to, or the different steps in getting a professional tattoo, if I decide to teach you about it using the chronological organizational pattern, my main points might sound like first, the skin is shaved and then sterilized, and then second, the main lines of the tattoo are traced. Third, the color pigments are applied, and then fourth, the tattoo is sterilized. So that's a quick overview of the organizational pattern. The third type of organizational pattern you could use is called the spatial order, and this is when you're actually following more of a directional pattern or a geographical pattern. For example, if I wanted to teach you about a hurricane and how a hurricane is actually made up, well then, I would talk about the three parts of the hurricane. So in the spatial organizational pattern, I could take you, my first main point would be the center of the hurricane and explain um, how the inner circle of the hurricane works. And then the, my second main point could be the surrounding eye wall, taking you visually in an outward pattern. And then my third main point in the organizational pattern would be the rotating eye wall, the large bands of clouds that are on the outside of the hurricane. So those would be my three main points if I wanted to use the spatial organizational pattern. The fourth organizational pattern that's covered in your textbook is called causal order, um, not casual, okay. <laughs> the causal organizational pattern. Basically it's cause and effect. So if I wanted to do a speech, an informative speech, where I was teaching my audience um, the effects of Ritalin on kids who have AD, ADHD, well, if it's going to be cause and effect, it's always going to be broken down into 
two main points. First, I'm going to talk about the cause. So, Ritalin is widely prescribed for young children who suffer from ADHD. That's going to be the cause of why we are prescribe, prescribing Ritalin to children. And then main point two, Ritalin has been linked with a number of serious side effects, including liver damage, heart disease, Tourette syndrome, and, and so on. So that would be the effect of taking Ritalin. Cause and effect. Always it's going to be two main points using the causal organizational pattern. The last organizational pattern I wanted to cover is called the problem solution order. And this, you can use it for informative speeches. Let's say if you want to explain maybe why a law was passed or why a regulation was passed or why a decision was made. This was the problem, so this was the solution that they came up with. However, um, if you're going to use it in a persuasive speech, it actually lends itself very nicely to try to influence the audience to agree with you in order to adopt a certain solution. This one, just like the causal organizational pattern, is always going to have two main points. The first main point, you're going to talk about what the problem is, and then the second main point, you'll talk about what is the best solution in order to help resolve that problem. If, for example, if I wanted to argue that the Electoral College should be abolished, then my first main point, talking about the problem, I could say something like the Electoral College is a serious problem in the U.S. because it does not give equal weight to each citizen's vote in electing the president. So that's the problem. What's the solution? Main point two. This problem can be solved by abolishing the Electoral College and electing the president by popular vote. So again, two main points, problem and solution. So those are the five main organizational patterns that you can use when you begin to write the body of your presentation. Remember, it's topical, chronological, spatial, causal, and problem solution. So as you begin to work on your future speeches, take a moment to think about which one of these organizational patterns is going to be more of a strategic Use a strategic decision. Which one is going to make the most sense and help you accomplish what it is that you're trying to accomplish in your presentation? All right. Bye.